And welcome in everyone to the Richard Moody Show along with the head coach of Carson Newman Soccer, Richard Moody. I'm Roger Hoover. Thank you so much for joining us. And coach, we saw on Wednesday your team's hosting LMU. The girls had a tough three to one loss, but still played well. And then the men came back with a two to one win. First of all, in that girls game, what were some of the things you liked out of your team? Yeah, you know, we, we started well in the first 10 minutes. We, we came out hard and, and our goal was to, to go through the first 10 minutes and, and not concede having been there in the previous two games and you know we got settled into the game and uh, and of course that uh, we got out and we we got after it and we we scored first you know and uh, I honestly thought we looked the better team um, LMU looked dangerous and we could see that they, they had some potential to, to score goals from from distance you know they had some players very capable of uh, shooting from distance and, and getting it on target you know they, they had a lot of shots that were kind of off frame we got a little bit fortunate and we were just kind of anticipating that one that when they do get on frame how dangerous will it be and uh, of course we're going to have time at 1-1 and uh, uh, you know we came out in the second half and, and maybe started off a little bit sluggish and let the game get away from us but again lots of positives we uh, you know we've came out we've, we've started strong we scored first um, you know again we're, we're waiting on some players to come back from injury but at the same time the players that have came in have stepped up and found some playing time. We got some girls off the bench that haven't played yet. And so, I mean, lots of positives, lots of positives out of the game, but more so the fact for the girls is they can see that they can compete with, uh, with, with any team. That The biggest thing now is trying to get them to play for the entire 90 minutes of soccer. So, Kendra Evans, your freshman goalkeeper, had really one of her better matches, better periods in that first period in LMU. What was some of the things that were working for her? Yeah, the height aspect helped us out a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, and the women's game is very difficult with goalkeepers uh, just because of the height aspect. Uh, a lot of Division One schools will uh, neglect to recruit kids just based on their height alone, forget if they're a decent keeper. So uh, with our height, you know, that's we kept her in the goal in the second half mainly because of that, you know. Uh, the shots from distance, they were obviously, try, obviously trying to aim high and uh, trying to find the back of the net uh, from distance can be difficult unless you aim high because it's got to go over lots of bodies. So we kept her in the goal and, uh, and again, like I say, she's got all the qualities, all the characteristics to be a fantastic goalkeeper. Uh, you know, besides her height, she's just athletic, she understands, she's uh, got a great technical ability. But the, the biggest thing about Kendra Evans is she's coachable and she wants to learn, she wants to get better. and. Uh, and that's, she, she'll be a top goalkeeper here for us, no, no doubt about it. You mentioned this before for the women's team. In order for the Eagles to have success, you have to find opportunities for Bianca Hall, also for Dana Stringle. Do you feel like they had many opportunities on Wednesday? Yeah, you know, personally, they didn't have many opportunities. They were trying hard to create opportunities. And again, from distance, we didn't really work anything uh, into the box. But uh, I feel like Bianca and Dana are, are two very similar players. They like to receive the ball with a back to goal. Uh, they're not the paciest forwards, so we lack a lot of speed up top. And, and I think as a team, we need to realize that. So we need to play to our strengths. And, and playing into their feet can be difficult. And so the success in our team are players working off of Dana and Bianca. Um, uh, but, you know, they, they created a few chances, but more, than, you know, more so than not, they always create pro problems for other teams. And, and they're very difficult to mark. They're difficult to deal with. And, and right now, it's a tough time for forwards when you're not scoring goals because you really need a goal for your confidence. So, uh, you know, once those goals start coming, hopefully we'll, we'll see uh, an improvement in, in the scores and the results for Carson Newman too. So. so the women's team fell to LMU 3-1. to one, Then you come right back in the men's game. Two early goals really fueled the way for a 2-1 win. Yeah, and that's been what we've told the boys and the girls all year. Let's, uh, the first 10 minutes, let, let's go after them, you know. Uh, if we have kickoff, we want to go after them. And it was good to hear the LMU bench. They'd obviously done pretty well with scouting. And uh, they were shouting at the players, hey, they're going to come after you. Uh, and I'm thinking, yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and, you know, last week we started well in the first 10 minutes, got a penalty kick against Newbury, and we didn't score. And so I told the boys they still owe me a goal in the first 10 minutes. And we near enough got two within 10 minutes. And, and the first goal was, you know, we won that corner kick out of a great run of play. And uh, Cinderella has got the assist for as well, Dulsley. And uh, two of our wingers uh, scoring the goals there on the evening, you know, and Cindra stepped up moments later with that set piece. It was just, uh, you know, genius. So, uh, but, you know, we, two goals in the first 10 minutes and the game's almost over, you know. And 
Alan New scored them what the 80, 84th minute, 85th minute, and you know they had just too much work for them uh, to, to to get another goal. So you know our boys did well, we played well, and again we're a one 0 two two one team. You know we're going to win by a goal, but uh, uh, you know one day I think that. Uh, we're going to find a team that we'll play against and, and the floodgates will open up because we create a lot of chances and, and again the, the scoreline against LMU could have easily have been uh, four or five you know we had you know they they pushed hard for a goal uh, when they got desperate and we got chances and uh, we just couldn't capitalize on them but again you know I'm proud of the boys they're playing well they're playing hard and again they're an exciting team to watch. Cinderwello has now scored in back-to-back -back matches for Carson Newman what have you liked about his progress in his first year in Eagle uniform? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, adapting to the American game style, uh, because the, the Scandinavian countries, the European countries, um, the, the, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to explain, but in America, there's, there's more of a, uh, people are looking for more of the, the, the athleticism of the athlete, and we, you know, it's hard to replace players like Matt Crane and Taylor Jolly. These two guys will be the hardest working, hardest running players that we've got on the team. They just have engines, and technically they're sound, uh, technically they're good players, but you bring in a European player, maybe like Cinderwello, and maybe the quality and the level of soccer he played that was just better than the likes of the American boys. So he has more of an impact to the game with his technique and his ability uh, versus his, his stamina and his athleticism. But, you know, Cindra does well to adapt to that. You know, like I said last night there, you know, if he's not having a good game technically, he makes up for it in effort, and he's always going to work hard. He'll always be there. Um, you know, he, he won't. He won't tell you that he's. He needs to come off the field. He, he'll just keep working until he can't run anymore. You know, uh, and he, he'll go all day. He'll work hard for you, and he he works hard for his teammates. You know. This time of the show, we always log on to Facebook.com/slash CN Eagles and check out the Ask the Coach feature. And this week's question comes from Caitlin, who wants to ask Coach Moody, how can the success of the men's team carry over to the women's team in the next few weeks? Yeah, uh, you know, again, we said last night that the, the girls have to play for 90 minutes. Um, you know, it was good to see, it's good when you travel with both programs on the road because both teams are playing the same formation, we're playing the same style, um, nothing's different for both teams and so the girls will have the opportunity to watch the boys play and they were all out there last night watching, we even specifically told them to stick around and watch the boys play, to, to watch the system and how we're trying to play and uh, you know, the girls understand it, they comprehend well. If anything, the girls are probably an easier group to coach than the boys. Uh, but they need to learn how to put the 90 minutes together and start with the intensity that the boys did because, uh, as you saw last night, two goals in the first 10 minutes were, was enough to, to win the game. So, you know, once the girls can get there, you know, again, we scored against LMU in the, you know, maybe 20th minute or something for the girls. Had we have been able to get another one, not concede, you go into halftime 2-0, you look like you, you might be able to pull off a win. So. You know the girls have to figure it out, and, and that's what we're here for. We're gonna we're gonna keep developing. You know the, the biggest thing that scares us is, you know, we we can't quit. We've got to keep going, and 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 I don't think that's us at all. I think the girls are gonna keep playing week in week out. And but again, we've just got to make sure they can go for 90 minutes. On the men's side, the goalkeeping has really been solid for Carson Newman by Romuald Lequevel. How has he worked with your assistant coach Francois Duberdeau and really getting a good system, getting set to go? Yeah, you know, we, we saw Romwell play. Uh, it came through through a friend of mine that, that it introduced me to this guy, and uh, you know, we didn't hesitate to, to look at him. Uh, we'd been in the hunt for, for a very, very good goalkeeper. We wanted to bring in someone top notch uh, because it starts there for a good foundation defensively, and that's where we were weak last year defensively. Not in the goalkeeper. We had a great goalkeeper last year, but defensively, as a as a unit, we were we were weak. So. You know, when we went after Romwald, there was a few things we were looking for. Obviously, he's a great shot stopper. He's great, uh, just a great all-round goalkeeper, athleticism-wise. Uh, but his distribution is fantastic from feet. He can put the ball wherever he wants. Um, uh, he, he can do whatever he wants with the ball at his feet. Uh, and, and that was a characteristic of a goalkeeper we were really looking for because, you know, at times are tough at the back. A, a goalkeeper with good distribution can take a lot of weight off your team. And so, you know, he's been great. He's... Uh, you know, at this point of the season, you know, I mean, he's conceded, I think, three goals uh, or two goals during regular season. Um, uh, but again, he's kept us in so many games and with his individual ability and his talent. And our goalkeeping staff just so happens to be French as well. So it works out well and uh, they work well together. They work hard together. Um, and, and the good thing about it as well, you know, a lot needs to be said for the two guys that play behind Romwald right now. Um, 
with Nick Martin uh, and Mike Avarna. I mean, these two guys are pushing them in practice and working hard and making it competitive. There's no doubt about it that that, that Romwald is the better keeper, mainly because of his experience and, and uh, the, the fact that he's a graduate student. But there's two young boys that, that are behind him, working hard, pushing him every day. Um, and I'd feel I'd feel safe putting either one of them in the goal and, and letting them have some time as well. But again, Romwald's earned it and, and he works hard in practice. He's a great role model. and. One of the reasons that we selected them as our captain for the team. So. so now coming up after the LMU games on Wednesday, you now travel to Wingate, a couple of tough matches coming up on Saturday. Yeah, it was good that, you know, we went on last night just to try and check the scores and who plays who. There's a, there's a game tonight that we'll be anxious to see how the score turns out. There's been a lot of ties in the conference, um, so it actually left us on top. And I think we've played the, we've played the most out of the, the team, so we've, we've got the better of the results. So we go to Wingate Saturday. And then we turn around on Wednesday and we have to play Tusculum. So maybe one thing that I don't like about the American season, it's just so confined and compact and we're playing, you know, three big games in the span of, uh, you know, of a week. So um, I think it was important. We were lucky we got the LMU game in last night due to the weather. Uh, we go to Wingate, always a hard place to go and win. But if you're talking about being a conference champion, you've got to go anywhere and, and win. So. Um, you know, and we're not even talking about that with the guys again. We're just taking it one game at a time. So win get and then we turn around for the Tusculum game uh, next Wednesday, which will be a lot of fun. Yeah, you mentioned that Tusculum game and a lot of excitement building, not just about the matchup between Carson Newman and Tusculum, two great rivals, but the pregame. I understand you have some special things in store for that. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to tell people everything that's going to happen, but we, we'd much rather you just come and see it. Uh, the game will be sponsored by Merle Lynch. Um, those guys have, have got behind Carson Newman Soccer and supported us uh, in the community. And so there's lots of exciting things happening with skydivers. Uh, we've done it in years gone by, but this will be the best that it, that's ever been. Uh, you know, last year we did a flyby with a plane. And, and to be honest with you, my, my assistant is the one that's arranging it. So there's lots of little things that have been arranged that I don't even know about. So I'm a little bit anxious to see how that's going to go. But it's always a fun event. You know, last year we had close to a thousand people come out. Uh, we're always giving away free T-shirts and whatever else just to get people here. But more importantly, we just want people to be involved in the game of soccer and be involved here at Carson Newman campus, you know. And uh, it's, it's a great place to be. It's a great campus. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful environment. And, you know, we encourage everyone to come out and watch it. You know, the rivalry is good. The soccer will be good. But, you know, just the fun and the festivities and, and just the opportunity for, for fellowship with one another there at those games is also, is also great. You know, the environment last night was fantastic for the LMU, both and the, the men's and the women's game, and I've got no doubt that it's going to be the same at Tusculum. Once again, Carson Newman hitting the road to face Wingate coming up on Saturday. First, the women's match. That will be followed by the men's match, and then Carson Newman coming back home for men's soccer next Wednesday night against Tusculum. And again, you will not want to miss the pregame. Five skydivers coming up, and for a preview of that, look here on Carson Newman TV on YouTube and also CNEagles.com for a Sneak peek of what may happen on Wednesday night. Coach Moody, thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next week on The Richard Moody Show. Thank you. For Richard Moody, I'm Roger Hoover. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNEagles.com.